Wow, here we are at the start of 2022. Thanks so much for joining me here on stockcharts.com for my presentation of what I think we can look for this coming year. And also, how about all of us saying stockcharts.com? My gosh, not only do they have my presentation, they have a whole bunch of great presenters for you each and every day, every week. A lot of education at stockcharts.com. So thanks to them as well. So where are we going in the future? What's going to happen? I'd like to give you my thoughts on it. The big question is, can the future really be known? That's a huge question. And the answer, I think, is yes and no. We have to define known. It can be kind of known. Uh, it can't be known exactly on every single trade, every single day, every circle turn of the market. But generally, I think we can know what the market's going to do this coming year. <clears throat> well, that's my statement, but uh, I've always said, trust but verify. Let's prove it, okay? Because if the future can't be known, it's a waste of time to do these reports. Let's see, can it be known? Well, to me, the proof is always in the pudding. So let's look at what I was saying last year and the things I've said here on stockchart.com during the last year. There's a lot of people, most people say the market can't be predicted. I think they're members of the flat earth society with members around the globe. What a great, what a great little comment that is. Huh? Um, these people that say the market can't predict, I think it is flat out wrong. And here's the proof. This is a forecast we showed a year ago now on stockcharts.com. And the blue line, you can see this little kind of double bottom down here thing was right at the end of the year and said, this is what should happen in 2021. And lo and behold, it's pretty much what happened because interest rates, which is what this blue line is, do impact stock prices. How did it come out? Well, there's that little bottom thing we we're talking about. And here's what the market actually did. And here's what the forecast actually was. Hmm. Maybe the future can be known. Oh, and by the way, we've even shown a little bit now into the first part of 2022, a little bit of a dip, and then back to the upside. One suggestion from at least interest rates, we may see good times this coming year. We also did a forecast for now way back in 2020. The forecast was down, up, and this red line was given here on stockcharts.com a year in advance before the, the black line happened. This is the forecast. And you can see pretty much that's what the market did. So while we can't know every single swing in the market, we get a pretty good idea, a roadmap of what's going to happen. Here it is for the Dow Jones utilities for 2020. Decline, the rallies, the rally at the end of the year. Hmm. Maybe we can get a sense of what's going to happen. If we can, then in the land of the blind, right? The one-eyed man is king. Well, we're way ahead of everybody else. We talked about my cycles work a lot here. Uh, a, a year ago on this channel, we also showed my forecast for 2021 based on a 115 week cycle. This was from the stock charts program a year ago. It said, look for a low in March and a rally up. And well, as you know, that's what happened. The big thing here is the 2021 forecast. This is a decennial pattern. We're going to be talking a lot about this today and show what it should forecast for 2022. All this is, is the average of all years ending in one, this part of the decade pattern. So this pattern represents uh, 1931, 1941, 51, 61, 71. All those years simply average together how have they traded. And on balance, this is how all of those one years have traded. Strong rally first year, a bit of a dip and a strong year end rally. We don't get the magnitude as much as we do the trend of the market and when we see the significant turns in the marketplace. That's the decennial pattern, not my original work, then originally by Edgar Lawrence Smith. Oh man, he was one smart guy. That's not my comments about him. That's what um, Mr. Buffett said about him. We also showed the 2021 natural cycle. This was a cycle forecast we did for our subscribers last year. Very strong first of the year, continuing into June and then a strong starting in September year end rally. Those were forecasts. That's what we said. Those things were known a year in advance. And the question is, how did they come out? Can we really forecast the market? Well, there it is. There's that chart you just saw. Yeah, the blue line, this one right here. And now we've extended it. This is what how the market actually traded. So I think we can come to the conclusion that the market can be generally known as to uh, what's going to happen. Uh, and that gives us a huge advantage to understand 
Also in that forecast last year, we said the forecast for an outrageously bullish 2021. And the bears were coming out of the woodwork. The P ratios were high. Joe Biden was incompetent. It was even an office. Uh, who, on and on and on. You always have these things out there. Now, let me be clear. I am not a perpetual bull. There is a time to be bearish. I love to be bearish. We have to be so careful being bearish because we have a lot more bull markets than bear markets. So if you want to give a bear market signal, your chances of being right are really slim because the long-term trend is to the upside. So be careful about getting bearish. We also forecast to buy uh, the second trading day in October to buy Costco. That was in a report written a year ago, and there's a second trading day in October in Costco and what happened. So I think that we can ask you, you be the judge, you know, what do you think? Can the future be known or can it not be known? I think that it can be known. So with that, let's kind of march forward. My forecast 2022 report is available now. You can know the future. Just go to our website, ireallytrade.com forecast, and you can get it there. But I'm going to show a lot today about how we can understand the future of the market. Um, in that report, I show the Dow and all major markets, the world forecast, all active commodity markets and individual stocks, and more importantly, the fundamental indicators you need to follow. And I'm going to be talking about those right here, right now. Predicting the future, is it all about the economy or is it? Well, yes and no. I've got some interesting data for you to look at today. Uh, I like these cycles, seasonals, valuation. Federal Reserve policy, interest rate, the cost of energy, stock valuations, there's a lot of things that go into making these forecasts. There certainly is nothing magic about any of these forecasts. They just are there and you have to work the data that you have. But I think the Federal Reserve is probably the most significant thing on a long-term basis. The Fed has a mandate from Congress for maximum employment, stable price, and moderate long-term interest rates. So those are the three congressional mandates they have. And they've done a pretty good job at it. The reality is for almost 60 years now, this will be my 60th year of trading, I've seen the Fed save and regulate our economy and stock market. Are they perfect? No. If we had bear markets, sure. They haven't lasted very long, no. And I know the Federal Reserve is no more federal than FedEx. I've read The Creature from Jekyll Island, The Secret of the Temple. I read those way back in the 80s. And the world was supposed to crash, and it didn't. The market was supposed to crash and burn forever, and it didn't. I know the Fed's never been audited, but I also know the Fed's done a really good job of holding a pretty stable economy. Since 1950, recessions have lasted between eight and 18 months, the average about 11 months. So give them credit. They've done a very good job, despite the pessimists who are always there crying wolf about how bad these guys are. I don't know, maybe they are, but we've had a heck of a good economy to get through COVID, to get through the scenario we saw in 2008. That was only down for a year. I mean, ugh. I want to trust these guys. Besides, if you can't sit through an 11-month decline in prices, you probably shouldn't be investing in anything. If you're a long-term investor, it's not for you. The economic reality of the stock market, we need to look at deficits, PE ratios, and gross domestic product. Those are the general thoughts. But this is the interesting one to me. The red line is deficits. The black line is stock prices. When deficits go up, stock prices go up. When deficits come down, stock prices go down. One of the best indicators of the future performance of the stock market is large deficits. I know it doesn't sound right. Well, it does actually. When you think about it, large deficits mean more money in circulation, more things being bought, purchased, built, jobs, and higher stock prices. The myth of GDP, this is really interesting. This was a, a, done doing advanced uh, regression techniques by the Northern Trust Company. And they found an R2 that is effectively zero, indicating no relationship, none, between the annual change in real GDP growth and changes in equity returns. In other words, don't focus too much on GDP because it does not predict stock prices. So we have to use something else. Maybe the people that say the market can't be predicted have been trying to use GDP to predict. So of course they failed. This is a big one coming up this year, inflation, Jimmy Carter, we're going to go back to that. We've already started inflating. Inflation numbers have been high. We're going to have to get ready for the worst here. Well, there's a couple of ways of looking at inflation. Here's the five-year forward inflation expectation from the Federal Reserve System. Notice in 2020, the index was going up, forecasting that we should see inflation. And in fact, we did start to see inflation, didn't we, in 2021? 
That was predictable by the Fed and they were absolutely right on that. As to where we are now, here's 2021, the forecast was for higher, but look what's happened. At the end of 2021, starting about October, the expectation is now to the downside. You wanna watch this one carefully here, okay? Um, this is from the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. You can follow their expectations. If we get below this level, clearly we're probably going to have seen an abatement of inflation. My cycle work on inflation is in this year's report also shows an abatement of inflation. So I don't think inflation is going to be the big bugaboo that people have been talking about. There, it will be apparent for the first quarter of this year. But I think after the first three months, we're going to start to see that subside. So the big thing is what signals a bear market? Are we gonna be going into a bear market this year? Oh, I hope not, but we could, we could. One good way of looking at bear markets is what causes them. And I think the best way of measuring a bear market, the best indicator of it is recessions. Here's a nice, uh, again, from the Federal Reserve System, probability of US recessions. And notice when we get up above 25 in this index, we usually see recessions. Well, we're not there yet. When we see recessions, we see bear markets without a doubt. Uh, of all the technical indicators, and I worked with every technical tool you can think of in my 60 some years in this business, I haven't found any that really call market tops very well. But I have found clearly that when we start a recession, we start bear markets. So there's a good resource for you here at the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis to see when we're starting recession. And the good news right now, we're down in this low area. We're not up close to the 25 line, which would indicate, at least for now, smooth sailing ahead. The yield curve though, and this is from stockcharts.com. You can get this for free on the internet. This is a delightful tool. We have problems here. Here's the stock market. Here's the yield curve starting to move to the downside. That is not good. So this is to me much more critical than inflation at this time is what's going on with the yield curve. And the yield curve has started to go flat to down. This has got to be watched carefully. Why this is going down is it means money wants a higher return on short-term rates than long-term rates because they think they're short-term problems. So we really have to watch this one carefully. This to me is one of the big problems uh, for 2022. Okay, we looked at the 2021 decennial forecast pattern, how it did for 2021. Uh, let's look at it for 2022. Again, this is the one we looked at earlier, just the average of all one years. Now I've averaged 1952, 62, 72, et cetera, right? And here we go. There's the forecast weakness into July and a strong year. This is how years ending in two within a decade have usually traded. So choppy, a peak maybe March, April, again in June. But starting June, July, August, October, guys and gals, we got to be really thinking about being very bullish on the market because that forecast based on the decennial pattern clearly says years ending in two have been very bullish. And you saw years ending in one, nice up move, nice up move at the bottom. Remember, this is more about when the moves happen than magnitude, but we've got good times coming later this year. So how about gold in 2022? I'd like to take a look at that as well. The university crowd usually says the correlation between gold prices is what really moves the market, but the correlation between gold prices and the federal funds rate is actually weak. People think that interest rates drive gold, but that is not actually the case. So what is? Well, I think it's a couple of things. The commitment of trader reports is huge in the gold market. When you see the net long position of the commercials, when if they ever do get net long, mortgage your house, buy gold, it will rally. Been a great record of that. Also in seasonal uh, tendency, we see uh, stockchart.com. At the first of the year, gold has usually rallied. Here we are at the first of the year. There's the seasonal influence right there. Not always, but usually at the first of the year, like right now, I would expect the bias is to the upside. So as a trader, that tells me I can start looking for buy signals in this market. I've blown it up a little bit for you can see this is on the spider, the gold spider EFTF. You can see, oh, this is what usually happens. We usually rally in the first part of the year. Then we have a bit of a dip. So if you want to get a sense of what's going on in the gold market, get the seasonal uh, pattern at uh, stockchart.com and you'll be able to follow that yourself uh, right up to the minute. Gold cycles right now are looking like this. We're in the general area of a low. We should rally up to around the end of uh, February and then have a dip. Now, remember, it doesn't mean 
as you can see here, the market goes from there to there. It says, oh, buy point, sell point, buy point in here, sell point here. So these are the general areas we're going to be looking for buys coming up. We're already in this area and around June and look out for some pullbacks and weaknesses in these time periods. Now, this is what the actual forecast of my report 2022 look at. I'm glad to share this with you. This is the actual forecast of what I expect gold to do. It should start to move up in that February into March and then come down. The general pattern, we can predict these pretty well with cycles. I use timing solution software for this. If you're really a cycle uh, affectionado, you, you'd have to simply have to have uh, timing solutions. It's been really good. So that's what the forecast in my report actually look like. So you can see in advance, the general roadmap these markets are going to follow. Here's the one I think you'd also like. I'd like to point this out. This is a forecast for American Airlines based on interest rates. Uh, and you can also do it based on energy prices because American Airlines has to buy a lot of uh, gasoline, right? Aviation fuel to get those planes to fly. And that costs money. And there also, American Airlines, all these airlines are heavily in debt. So interest rates really matter. So we look at the pattern of interest rates that can be pretty predictable, which I think is telling us right now, we're probably gonna have a pretty good rally in American Airlines this year. Uh, these stocks have been beat up, but we see based on the interest rate pattern, also my energy forecast for them, this is a market that I think we're gonna see move to the upside. So this is how we can forecast things, which is really what this presentation is about. How can we know the future? Well, I think we can know it with cycles, we can know it with these fundamental relationships. We need to look at the right thing, clearly not GDP. Recession indicators in the Federal Reserve, oh yeah, we gotta look at those, those are really important. And to stay bullish until we get recession indicators. You, this coming year, oh, you're gonna be hearing so many people with all these bearish scenarios, PE ratios are high, uh, margin debt is high, uh, whatever and those things are always there and we've seen as you've seen where we're last looking at it um this this bad this chart look at that that's a market we've been in since the horrible crash of 2008 but we've been in this for a long time now will it end sure at some point we'll have a bear market but the bears were wrong here and here and here and here and here and here you're not right being buried for very long. So be very cautious of that. I'd like to give you some more words of investment wisdom, a little bit of that I've learned is the long-term trend is up as I just showed you. Be really quick to turn bullish, but take your time to be bearish. This scene, we don't get very, very many bearish opportunities in the marketplace. So you gotta be really careful and value will not be denied. That will really would apply to the American airline chart we just looked at. American Airlines, the largest airline in the world. Um, they got a lot of problems. I flew on them this week. Wasn't the best flight of my life. Wasn't like flying used to be. Oh my gosh, first class used to be great. Now it's like, what? It's the ground bus. Um, but there is value to these huge companies that are monopolies essentially that own the marketplace. They own the marketplace. These are valuable companies. We've seen that in Costco. We've seen that in Apple. And so uh, value will not be denied. You want to look for companies that have great value. And trend is the basis of all profits. We have to have trend, and that's a function of time. I get so many emails from people say, oh, Larry, um, I bought and I got out too quickly, and now the stock is way up. It's because we're too nervous. You're too nervous. I get too nervous. I get in. I get out too quickly. I get frightened because I looked at a chart. Or I read something in the news, so I don't read newspapers. I don't like television set. Um, I don't know what's on TV. I'm not interested very much in the news because it will always shake you out of a position. So if you believe in something, buy it, hold on to it. If you believe in good companies and buy those and hold on to them as a long-term investor, the only problem you have is a bear market. And one of those is going to come. And so far this year, I don't see that's going to happen. So... Uh, Trend is the basis of all profits, and that takes time. It takes time for you to hold on to these positions to so be able to be in those positions and hold on to them. A little bit of word about my 2022 forecast report. And this is interesting. Sure, that's a little bit of a hustle to get you to buy it, but I, and I hope you do. Um, but I want to share with you a couple of things about these forecasts. The stock markets of the world 
almost always move together. So if the, our stock market is going to go down, stock to China are going to go down about the same time, not quite in China, a little bit different there. But in Europe, in Russia, Italy, they really seem to be linked together. That's why I think they're predictable. There's some, oh, what do we call it, master cycle of emotions in the universe that really drives these individual markets. They all move pretty much together. They dance to the same tune, which is totally different than the commodity markets. And I think that's because stocks are an average. It's a lot easier to predict what the average of 50 people will do in a room, who they'll vote for, who they won't more than, than predicting just one person. So when you try to predict just gold, that's a whole different ball game than trying to predict the stock market itself. It's uh, uh, very different to predict the market. Um, you can do that because we have so much more data on it. The cycles are more stable there, but individual stocks and individual markets can be a little more complex to do. And also you need to have these fundamental indicators to help you predict the market because that's really significant as to how they're going to move. The fundamentals, and this is the thing I want you to look forward this coming year. I want you to look at that yield curve on stockcharts.com at that yield curve, maybe we'll go back to that and show you what I want you to look for in the yield curve, yeah. If this yield curve, which is now down a little bit, but starts to go down substantially and is down for more than a quarter, we've got to be very careful about the stock market. This is the best harbinger that we have right now of what's going to happen uh, in the future. Uh, the only really ointment fly in the ointment that I see right now is here. Now, if you look at other times in the past, the yield curve was down prior to the crash in 2007, but it started turning down about six months in advance. So maybe that's what's happening now. So it's a very leading indicator. It does not, not a timing tool, but it certainly suggests we're close to a peak. This is just saying, well, we've got to start to be careful a little bit the rest of fundamentals are still bullish, but if we see this down substantially coming now, it's like down a little bit, but coming down like this, that's going to be a real problem for us in the market. So really, really watch that one carefully, okay? That's going to be your best harbinger of what's going to happen uh, in the future. And again, our general roadmap forecast, which is not my actual forecast for 2022, but this will be a pretty good one to follow, is the average of all those two years, the decennial pattern. And you think about it, what happened in 1962, stock market bottom, 72, stock market bottom, 1982, stock market bottom, 2002, a stock market bottom. Years ending in two have been really bullish in the marketplace, usually with a decline uh, somewhere in the year and a big rally starting later in the year. Uh, 2012, go back and look at 2012, look at 1992, look at 2022. Whatever this phenomenon is, this 10-year decennial pattern, uh, it's there. It's real. I've been following it since 1970-something. My friend Yale Hirsch worked with it as well. I mean, it's, it's just there. And so we need to acknowledge it. This is the reality of our business, of our marketplace, that the decennial pattern is alive and well and working. So as a general roadmap, <clears throat> this is going to be a really good one for those of you uh, want to do all this on your own. This is a great starting place, a general idea of uh, what's going to happen in the market. Okay, uh, my forecast 20, 2022 is available. You can know the future today and get a pretty good idea of what's going to happen in the future. Uh, we show forecasts for all the individual markets, commodities. You're going to use those and however you want, as well as quite a few individual stocks as well. I finally figured out, I think, pretty much how to tell when these major turns are going to take place in these markets. And they're there. They're pretty real. Um, so I'm going to really wish you a prosperous 2022. And my parting words for 2022 is you want to stay bullish in this market. Um, you want to be a buyer of pullbacks in the market until we get some substantial economic changes. But I think the best side of the market to be on this year is going to be the long side. That you see big rallies in the market, you can, especially short-term traders, you can sell and take your profits, move to the sidelines, but I wouldn't sell short. Be very careful. Oh, sure, experienced traders can sell short, especially in the stock indexes as we get close to uh, cyclical highs. But by and large, the best strategy this year, I believe, will be to buy weakness and sell strength. We're in a bear market, the, weakness, the strategy is just the opposite, right? You want to sell strength. 
uh, uh, and be very careful of buying weakness. This year, I think we're going to see the market follow pretty much that two-year forecast, a little change in that from in our actual forecast report. But um, you want to stay bullish this year. You don't want to listen to the purveyors of pessimism uh, who are going to try to scare you out of your positions. I don't think we're going to see any massive runaway bull market in gold. I think we'll see interest rates eccentric to the downside this year that we're not going to see a substantial increase in interest rates. And that is significant for bond traders. It's significant for the stock market. If we do start to see uh, increases, substantial increases by the Federal Reserve and uh, the Fed rates, well, then that's a real negative as well. So we want to watch that. But the data I have now, the forecasts I'm working with now, tell us, no, we don't have to worry about a uh, substantial up move in interest rates here. I think we're going to continue to see the same general direction, trend direction, if you will, in interest rates that we've been seeing uh, the last couple of years. So that's my wrap up for 2022. I hope you find this helpful, give you some perspective of these coming years so you understand as these things unfold exactly what's taking place. And now you have a roadmap for 2022 been my pleasure to present it to you. Again, thank you so much for posting the messages you have on YouTube. Continue to do that. We've had some good dialogue with people. And thanks, stockchart.com, for allowing this to happen. So for all of you in 2022, I'm going to wish you good luck and good trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.